Hi, my name is Tom Clyke. We're in Tobo, Wisconsin today at a fleet called Rethwich, and we're going to install roller bushings on two different styles of trucks. One has an elastomeric bushing, the other has a threaded greasable bushing. All right, the first truck we'll be working on today is a Peterbilt 389 2018. This one happens to have the threaded pins and bushings on it. And the first thing I like to do is check the dimensions, some of the dimensions, so that I can match with the application guide to make sure we got the right kit before we tear it all apart. So a couple easy checks you can do is one, you can measure the center to center on the sidebar, which is four inches on this one. We can also mention, measure the width of the spring, which is four inches. And if you can, if you can measure the diameter of the bushing, and sometimes if you have a, a, a bushing laying around that's outside the truck, you measure that diameter and make sure that diameter is correct as well. And you can match it with the application guide, and then you know you have the right kit. So after checking that you have the right parts, the right roller bushing kit, you want to be able to lift the vehicle and leave the axle down. So what we've done here is we're using a heavy duty jack to lift underneath the front motor mount so that we can lift everything up and leave the suspension on the ground. This one has the threaded pins and bushings that are greasable and we're going to use a couple specialized tools today. So in this particular truck we do not need to remove the spring or the hanger backer from the vehicle. We're actually going to remove and install utilizing these tools. So these tools I ordered online and they're from OTC. You can type in OTC 5080A to get the universal adapter kit that installs various different uh, makes and models of trucks. This comes with a hydraulic ram and all the adapters and the receiver tube that you need. And then you can use either a air over hydraulic or a hand pump with this tool kit, with the hydraulic ram, to remove and install. So the first air over hydraulic, part number is 2510A, and the hand pump is 4000A. Either will work. First step in disassembly is taking off the sidebars. Okay, once you get your sidebars off, then your next step is to remove the threaded pins. All right, the next step is going to be removing the bushings from the spring eye and the hanger bracket. And we're going to actually pull the bushings out. So we go back to our universal um, removal tool and we're going to find a, an adapter that is just slightly smaller than the bushing we're removing because we're going to actually be pulling the bushing out. And we have to bring our receiver tube and that will basically receive the old bushing into it and then our hydraulic ram. So you first put the receiver tube on, put it through the threaded bushing Put your adapter on the other side, and then put your nut on. Now it's important, once you get it close, to line this up so that you can pull the bushing through, it doesn't get caught on the spring or on the adapter plate. Next thing, we'll install our press hydraulic pump. And today we'll use the air over hydraulic. Now it's important to get your collar, removal collar, lined up with the bushing on the other side so you're not, the collar doesn't get stuck on the spring eye. And 
it'll take out the bushing part way and then you have to thread this in further so it'll pull all the way out. Now what we found, it's easier to remove and replace the bushing for the hanger bracket when it's off the truck. So Zach from Rutgers is going to help me remove the bracket and we'll take it over the press to remove the old bushing. All right, our next step is going to be to push the bushing out of the hanger bracket on our press here. And to do that, I'd recommend uh, getting a drive tool from where you bought the roller bushing kit from. There's a special drive tool that fits this specific kit, and you can find out what the drive tool is by looking at the catalog again at your kit number and cross it over, and I'll tell you what tool is, is required. So this will work to remove the old bushing and also in, uh, install the new bushing, which I'll show you. Again, we're going to use our receiver tube. We're going to line everything up on our press, and then Zach's going to help me with the press again and press this bushing down. Okay. Okay, our next step is we're going to clean the bore before we install our new bushing and we'll show you how to do that next. All right, once we have the bushing pressed out, we bring the bracket over to a vise, install it in the vise, so we can then hone this out, clean up the bore. So I use a little WD for lubrication, a small hone. All right, just want to do it enough just so that you clean up any uh, burrs or anything off of there, any dirt, and uh, clean it out with a rag, and we should be ready to install the new bushing. All right, no matter what bushing you remove from these brackets, whether it's the Lastromeric or the threaded bushing, same process. We'll clean the bore out, and then we'll get it ready to install the new roller bushing. Now, in this particular kit for the rear shackle, you have one roller bushing with ribs on it. You have another one that is smooth. Now, the ribbed one is going to be used for the spring eye. The smooth one is what we're going to put into this hanger bracket. Now, it's important when you're installing into this hanger bracket that you pay attention to where the grease circ hold is. You want the grease circ hold to be on the outside, and you want to install the assembly together. Even though the pin slides back and forth, it's always best to install it as an assembly and use the drive tool that you can purchase where you purchase your roller bushing kit from. This particular one is matched for this, so the pin fits in there nice and snug. And before we do that, we'll make sure that we lubricate everything. It's always best to put some lubrication. I like WD-40. We'll lubricate the bore. We'll lubricate the bushing. And Zach's gonna help me again with the press. Just make sure we get everything lined up. And then we'll have to put our uh, receiver tube underneath because the pin's coming through. And we're going to press this so the bushing is flush with the bra outside of the bracket.
dry tool. Typically the pin will move nice and smooth for you. Make sure the pin does not fall out of there. And now we're ready to install it back onto the truck. Now we're gonna reinstall the hanger bracket back onto the truck. Our next step is we're going to clean out the spring eye, and you can do that either with some emery cloth or I happen to have a, a wire brush here that I'll go and clean everything out and get it ready for the installing the bushing. Okay, our next step is we're going to install the, uh, the pin and bushing into the spring eye. After we got it cleaned up, the best thing is to do is lubricate the inside of the spring eye and we'll also lubricate the bushing. But to install this into the spring eye, we need to remove the pin from the roller bushing. And we need to insert a collar that comes into our, from our install tool, so it protects the needle bearings inside the bushing. We'll apply some lubrication. So the next step is we put our large washer onto the threaded rod of the ram. Start that through the spring eye. Insert our collar into the bushing so we can protect the needle bearings. Head onto the threaded shaft. Use our, our washer that's the same size as the bushing. So it'll, it'll press on the outside or pull on the outside of that bushing. Then install the nut. And you'll spread it in there to line everything up, snug it up. You'll have to adjust your ram and thread this down again so that it goes in all the way. Release. And we can thread this back off again. Move our washer. Pull the ram out. Move the sleeve. And we'll install our pin, making sure the grease circuit is to the outside. Okay, next we're gonna install the shackle sidebars with the hardware and the shim washers that come in the kit. Now we've already installed the first shackle on the other side with the shim washers and the bolts. The important thing is here, again, make sure your grease circs are to the outside and make sure that your, the, the slot and the pin is lined up so you can get the bolts through the sidebar. So we're going to do the same thing to this side and install the washers. We're going to slide on our sidebar. Now we're going to install a C-clamp to hold the sidebars tight so that your shim washers do not move in there. And you can also clamp it tight enough so that you can put the rest of your hardware through. Okay, and while the C-clamp is still installed and tight, you tighten down your nuts and washers. Nuts and bolts.
Okay, and you can remove your C-clamp. Okay, our last step was to install the grease irks and then grease each one until the grease purges out either side of the bushing. Nice thing about the roller bushing, it takes up to seven feet of linear feet of grease in each bushing. So plenty of grease to start. The other nice thing about it, when you re-grease during a PM or every five to 10,000 miles is what we recommend, you don't have to lift the vehicle off the ground for it to take grease, it'll always take grease. So as long as you keep them greased, it's, uh, that's why these roller bushes are so reliable and durable and it will really give you a good ride. So thank you for watching.